I got every workout from 1983 until 1997. Every single workout, every rep, every set. Preparation notes for Mr. Olympia and all these things. This worked, this didn't work. So very analytical, writing everything, analyzing, studying. His training diary was his life, and that was him. He knew if he followed X, it would equal Y, and, it, and that's what's been proven. He totally believed what he was doing was right. He had no doubts. That's half the battle. If you believe in something, you, you can make it happen. Blood and guts is just to the level where no one's willing to go. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Turn the body inside out, no matter what it takes. He wasn't going to stop. He was a train. I'm not a morning person. I'm dedicated to being passionate about it. Bodybuilders have become more lazy. People have always thought I lift fake weights. Iran and the United States. You take, you take responsibility for that. How do you feel about uh, Chris Bumstead um, and his improvement? Because I, I saw a picture side by side from the previous Olympia in 2020. It was like, it's amazing how much he improved also in one year. Um, how do you feel about yeah. him as a competitor, as a champion? I honestly didn't even expect him to improve that much. I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be a bit more conditioned. You know, I was like, if he's going to look the same as the last time, maybe he's going to win again, unless uh, Brian improved a lot. But uh, Chris improved so much that I was like, wow, he's just a different bodybuilder altogether now. His back, which was his weak point, almost became his strongest point. So that's a big thing. And in bodybuilding, it's, it's even more important that you have improved than that than just looking good at, at the time. So the judges could really clearly see that Chris has improved compared to last time, which is which is why I believe that he won, and uh, that Brian didn't improve. I think compared to last time, so he was placed down uh, to third. So because Chris uh, improved so much, I think that's why he definitely got his first place, and it's really uh, deserved in my opinion. Do you think he's uh... He's very blessed genetically, like he just has such a perfect um, genetics for classic physique. And of course, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not I'm sure, I know he works hard, of course, but it's almost like he makes it look easy, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you get that feeling from, from Chris? Yeah, he makes it look easy, but at the same time, I know that it's also very hard. I, I watch his YouTube videos as well, and throughout the videos, you can see that he struggles a lot as well. Of course, he doesn't show everything because I think some things are good being kept a secret, of course, uh, being number one. But, uh, you know, I, I know that he works very hard for it, but it is a fact that he does have very good genetics for classic physique, especially because of his waist and the type of vacuum he can pull. There are a lot of uh, classic physique competitors who can pull a good vacuum, but they just don't look as flowing or as good as Chris Bumstead's vacuum does. And because his waist is so small and it tapers so nicely to his lats and everything else tapers and flows together so well, he makes a lot of poses look very good, even though he is not the biggest guy on stage. So that's uh, his gift. But I know at the same time that he works very hard as well because getting in that conditioning just means you have to work hard and suffer, that's for sure. No, he's amazing for sure. Now, vacuum, how important is it to you? Do you feel like all classic physique guys should be able to do a vacuum pose? Do you feel like it's, it's a mandatory for classic guys? Um, well, I don't think it has to be mandatory, but only if it looks better on your physique, then you should definitely at least showcase, for example, in the absent thigh pose, showcase that you can do a vacuum and then do the regular uh, absent thigh crunch. But that's actually funny. In the Netherlands, uh, in a different bodybuilding um, community here and different shows, the vacuum is actually a mandatory pose already in classic physique. So the first thing, literally before any other pose, they have to show the vacuum first. It's like an elimination. If you can't do the vacuum, you already know that you won't win because even if you look the best, that pose you already lost. So no matter how, how lean you are or how muscular you are, if you can't do the vacuum, all the other guys are going to beat you in that pose. So that was quite funny for me when I saw that. I was like, wow, everybody's talking about it and they're actually doing it here. So, uh, But I don't think it really should be mandatory. And uh, people have actually told me as well, why don't you crunch your abs when you're doing a front level bicep? Maybe it looks better. But for me, uh, because my waist isn't the smallest, 
because from the front it's like like Arnold's waist, it's a bit wider. So I have to play around with the vacuum and with my lat width has to play a big role in the V taper. And if I crunch down my abs, I also also pull in the lats. So it looks a lot less like a V taper in uh, my physique. So when I do a vacuum, I can showcase my V taper a lot better. So and it and it also uh, makes my stomach a bit more uh, le- a bit smaller. Of course, not to Chris Bumps' level because that's simply how it's put together. But at least uh, because of my wide lats and wide shoulders, it still looks like a good V taper.